Well, welcome to the program. Welcome to the show. I am your host, Adricos. Wait, I'm Mark Goldberg. This is Mark Vlogs Watches. And right next to me, right over there, is Clyde, the watch wrangler. Happy New Year, Clyde. Happy New Year, Mark. How are you doing? I'm so I'm so good. I'm so happy. I'm so glad that we're here together. And most of all, I'm glad that after your emergency uh, appendectomy, your, uh, your confinement to hospital for one week with a raging case of something or another, hemorrhoids, wasn't it, Clyde? That you're healthy, you're out, we're ready for a good new year. Yeah? Uh, no, it was COVID. Oh, yeah. Well, I, you know, you know, for HIPAA reasons, I'm protecting your privacy. But uh, I'm glad that you survived COVID. Have you got any lingering after effects? How's it? Uh, how's how's the recovery process? Um, mm. It's just slow, believe it or not. Um, be doing fine. Then all of a sudden, your energy gives out. So fatigue. Yeah. Fatigue. And, and, uh, fatigue. Mm. Yeah. And uh, COVID clumsy. Let's talk about that for a quick second. So um, tell me about COVID clumsy. Is that like, you know, drop I mean, stuff, exactly. Drop stuff, um, mm. lose, lose your balance momentarily. So is that like, a, what do we call that? Like neurological after effects? Possibly a little bit, but it's that it too is getting better. Mm. Did you like look that up? Talk to a doctor? Like, you know, what's your aftercare been? I mean, they just send you home, pat you on the back, and say, "Hey, good luck, buddy." Um. Well, we'll see. We'll have to see if it continues or not. So far, it's it's getting it's getting better, just like everything else. Just like oh, everything. Yeah. Else. Well, that's that's a good thing. I mean, I worry about you driving now. Do we have to worry? You okay, like you know, driving that MR2. Plus, you got that new Toyota with a stick shift. Yeah. You know. Mm. Okay. Well, I did actually. Never mind. What happened? Well, go ahead. Tell the story. No, not right. Let's talk about watches. We're here talking about watches. All right. Well, <laughs> actually, actually, first of all, gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us. There are a mob of you in here, and we appreciate you having shown up. That's the first thing. So appreciate that. Um, as we are moving through this stream, if you wouldn't mind terribly, just take a quick second and smack, lick the lick, smack, or just do something with the like button. Um, and the reason is this is going to post up, uh, you know, to Facebook and people will be watching it later. And I don't know why, but people hate on live streams a whole lot, Clyde. I, I, I don't know if it's me or you or what that what that's all about. But, you know, while you're here, hit the like button, hit the subscribe if you're so inclined. I appreciate your being with me, not just Clyde right over there, but all of you, each and every one of you who has taken a little bit of time out of the beginning of your year. So first of all, what what a. What a hellacious year 2020 was. It was a very wild ride. The first Stop. half. Yeah, right? You know, uh, live long and prosper. You have been and always will be, my friend. Anyway. Actually, wait, let's do the first part. Peace and long life. And then, Hail Mary. How's it go? <laughs> peace and long life. And the response is live long and prosper. Also to you. Uh, may peace be unto your spirit. I, I, I don't know. Okay, I'm not that much of a Trekkie, Clyde. Although, actually, it's yeah, what, when, isn't it Trekkie? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Trekkie is a pejorative term. Yeah, thank you. All right. Well, I mean, uh, Clyde, actually, very few people know this, but Clyde's a clopper. So I, I don't know if you even people know what that means, but look it up. That's Clyde's. Clyde Affiliates is a clopper. And a brony, but the clopper sect within the brony, you know, within the brony, within the Get brony. Get clopper. With the Verony verse. So look, um, again, thanks for spending some time with us here. We really do appreciate it. We will be taking a look at your comments. We want to involve you in the topic here. The topic is, Clyde, what's going to happen with Rolex in 2021? Have you got predictions? Um, yeah. I want to know. I want to know what the, uh, I want to know also want to know what the punters think. What have you got yeah. to say about that, Clyde? It will be like 2020, except even worse. <laughs> please don't say that i don't know i mean i guess it could be worse but like it would be it would be bad if it would be bad well, and the, well theoretically theoretically the factory is shut down for a few months so mm. hopefully hopefully they've got the vaccine in geneva or wherever the heck they're located and distributing it hopefully yeah motor skills yeah, yeah. Your, your motor skills which is the motor skills is connected to the knee bone which is connected to the nervous system so apparently hans knows from whereof he speaks um hey if we get alejandro the surgeon from madrid on ale ale alejandro if you're listening um clyde will yeah i'm gonna send i'm gonna send uh 
Hisham the get the like yes, big yes. But, and I did put it in the in the uh, excommunicated cardinals list, so we'll see if anybody shows up, but probably not. However, um, you know, if you're a physician, if you're in the audience, if you know what's wrong with Clyde's motor skills, you know, sounds like it's a known, you know, like a known side effect of COVID. Please touch base with us. So, uh, and McLovin says we are Rebel Wilson streaming. I love that avatar. Okay. Actually, wait, let me look. See, the thing is, if we announce first and come on first, it's technically not Rebel Wilson streaming. Exactly. Actually, exactly. It's just he is Rebel. He is Rebel Wilson. I don't know who he is. Me, anyway, let's me. move along, Clyde. Let, let's gotcha. just let's get into the topic here, right? MPS says it's the 50th anniversary of the Explorer Two. Maybe it's getting an update. That seems to be the conventional wisdom. And Clyde, tell the punters what everybody expects on the new, on the on the fiftieth anniversary edition. What do they expect, Clyde? All right, everyone expects. Yes. Um, mm. everyone expects mm. there to the redo the explore explore two, but with a spit it a out ceramic not a non rotating ceramic bezel. There we go, just like they did to the steel Daytona. Right. And um, now, Clyde, you and I each owned we for for like ten minutes. You and I were Explorer Two buddies. Forty two. Uh, yeah, the forty two. That's correct. We, we I had white and you had black. That's correct. Well, we are I mean, the. No, it, you had white and I had black. I'm because I, I'm not a racist. We were inverse one to the other. You and me, right? Yeah. Speaking of Star Trek, I had, was, I had the non-racist one. Speaking of Star Trek, wasn't it very much Actually, like Black Dials well, Matter? Clyde, remember what we talked about before we went on the air? <laughs> yeah, you're doing it right now, just so oh. you know. Yeah. Okay. So, but doesn't this remind you a little bit of the um, of the um, of the Star Trek with the half white guy and then the uh, the other half white guy, half black Let, guy? You mean? Fighting your, do you mean the episode "Let This Be Your Last Battlefield"? Jeez, you you even you even know that you know trouble with no, triples. I, Loki was one. I can't remember the other one. Well, anyway, Are yeah, it's white. Well, it's a, it's, and Spock pointed out you're both half black and half white. You know, if you're a little bit under 100 years old, <laughs> then you probably have no idea what Clyde and I are talking about. <laughs> I'm now, actually... On the other hand, if they were in the South, mm. should I go on with that or stop now? No, you could stop. Actually, you know, Clyde, you're, what, 11 or 12 years younger than me, right? Yes. But things get to Oklahoma probably 20 years later than everywhere else, so... Technically, Clyde and I were raised on the same stuff, you know, yeah. like Green Acres and Petticoat Junction, right? Yeah, Clyde? Mm. yeah. Well, yeah. Conventional TV sucked. We're both are glad to go Buck Rogers, and you know, of course, in Wonder Woman, mm. Linda Carter, Apple, <sighs> Apple Watch, Apple Watch, <sighs> Apple Watch, Linda Carter. Okay, so um, anyway, people, yes, the Charlie's the Angels. Hold on. Let's get back to the watches. The conventional wisdom is it's getting the bezel, uh, the 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 black ceramic, you know, bezel. I I do think that's going to happen. And Clyde, that is the conventional wisdom. But do you do you agree? Do you think it's going to happen? They could just simply change the GMT hand to green. Ooh, that would be like a little nod to the to the Rolex green for the anniversary edition. <laughs> You know, if they did that for like a year or two, people would probably go cr stupid crazy they over it. They would, but the thing is, Rolex yeah. isn't doing that for our benefit. Oh, no. They're doing it for their own benefit, aren't they? Right, right. Mm. So exactly. they'll, do it, they'll do it for like five, six, seven years until they yeah. update it again or yeah. possibly longer. Mm. Now, here, here's the other thing, though. I'm mm. not really, I kind of hope they don't because the more I think about it, mm. I think the Explorer 2 is like the last class classic Rolex sports watch with the steel bezel and yeah the, the, um well that's a fair point although i mean, it, I mean as, is, as is the explorer but what about yeah i was just going to say what about the explorer the op now um and the uh the milgauss the air king those are the, fair the milgauss sir has yeah. polished center links oh all right so that disqualifies it yes you know. Okay, so um, anyway, we will see what happens. But yeah, a lot of people think that now. You and I, each of us sold our Explorer 2s. Um, right. you're, you're secretive in your finances, but I will tell the punters that I sold mine, I think for just about exactly what I paid for it. <laughs> Something I sold it for under $7,000. Well, I think I sold mine for what I, a little bit more is like, um, like 72 or 73. Do you have box and papers? 
Yes. And I did not. So I think I sold mine for 67, 60, 800, maybe maximum. And, right. and, mine, and mine was naked, but polar. Okay. So um, I, I, I think what will happen is, um, and tell us in the comments what you guys think. If they go ahead and, and slap a ceramic bezel on this, that the steel ones will rise in value because they'll kind of be like, um, you know, they will immediately become discontinued and notably vintage, right? Well, and and there's a noticeable difference between between the two because sometimes yeah. Rolex has a reference and they run it for 30 years and you literally have to be, oh, who's that? Who's that smoke with the glasses up? You have to be Tim Masso to tell the difference. I like Tim. Okay. So um, hmm. here's the thing, though. If they go ahead and put the ceramic bezel on the Explorer 2, yeah, the, sure. the steel bezel ones, before they rise in price and popularity, I think they will sharply drop because they will not be new. They will not be shiny. Yeah. Um, there will be something notably cooler, you know, and different. And so I think. Nor, be, of course, they'll have the newest movement. Good they'll point. Have increased, they'll have the increased. Um, 72 hour power reserve, my friend. Yes. Yes. So what I think, well, what I think will happen is for the first six months after let's say that this happens if for the first six months afterwards um the price of the explore two previous version will dip it'll actually be a very good time to buy one because then it'll start to rise and rise and rise that's what i think is going to happen or mm. or you could get the old one if you like the old one hmm. well, yes i suppose you could do that yes but you know People always want to talk about what's going to happen to values. And, and that's kind of an important point, though, too, Clyde, because if you like it, um, we're telling you you should buy it yeah. soon. You know, that's that's really if, it, if it struck your fancy. Bingo. I mean, if you don't like it, don't get it. I, I liked it. Why did I sell mine? Why? Well, let's start with you. Why'd you sell yours, Clyde? Um, did you like it? It was all right, but it, yeah, I just caught myself not wearing it, not thinking about yeah, it very much. Yeah. That was a little bit me, although the polar dial was had like incredible legibility and 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 I liked it. In fact, I really liked it, but I think I didn't love it. And that was the you know, that was kind of the the killer issue for me. And I decided I just wanted to recycle the money. Right. So yeah. When you're a collector, it sometimes becomes important to recycle the dollars. Otherwise, you turn around and you have $150,000 in watches and your net worth can't support, you know, that. Yeah. That anyway, that's what happened to me. So I decided to start divesting. Oh, Clyde, speaking of divesting, I sold some watches. Um, yes, yeah, I did. I sold David SW. Um, I gotta say, I, I um, I've had good selling experiences previously with David SW, so I went to them to get quotes on what did I sell? The one one. What are you? What are you? That's bad noise, Clyde. One one six six two two. Sold that. That's a Yachtmaster Blue Dial Platinum. Did I make it again? No, please don't do that. And then um, what else? I sold the. I sold that one. And um, oh yeah, finally I've sold the one four zero six zero M that you have been lusting after for years. So that's gonna go. Uh -huh. And the one six six one three the two-tone bluesy that's also going so glad to have those glad to have those coming out of the collection i won't have to think about rotating too much more but i did keep the um a couple things i was thinking about but but i have decided to keep at least for the time being is the 43 millimeter redline sea dweller right and the james cameron which is i think both a little special <sighs> mm -hmm. no not really not not really. Well, we'll see. Maybe not. You know, um, I'll tell you, you said something a couple minutes ago, Clyde, that kind of makes me a little afraid to sell that red line seed dweller because you said, what if they slap a green hand right on the on the Explorer for like four or five years? And then they, you know, just to celebrate the anniversary of that watch and then they take it away. Well, then that green hand is going to get kind of valuable. And and I. And I, I keep wondering if that's not exactly what they're going to do with that red line on the seat dweller. And Rolex, we are crazy about our red text, so I'm a little afraid. You know, I'm a little afraid to sell that one. But the thing is, they're doing that for their, you know, or it could be on there for 10 years. Exactly. You never know. You never know. Hisham! Hey, Sham, happy new year to you as well. Um, 
It's 5.04. Well, it's bright and early in the morning. Have a cup of tea and, you know, come on in. Come on in. Um, Greg's asking if there's going to be two price increases for Rolex. There's been some rumors about price increases out of the UK. Right. You know, but I actually haven't heard. I have a couple of sources who sometimes give me pretty interesting inside information. <clears throat> a, a fair amount of which has turned out to be true. Oh my God, Clyde, what are you back? What are you, what are you doing? You're killing me. I mean, sorry. You're killing me. You're killing me. Anyway. Um, and um, I haven't, ha I, I personally haven't heard anything about a price increase, so I couldn't really quite tell you. Now, Arch are you still in communication with your moles? Sorry. What's that? Are you still in communication with your moles? Well, you know, um, it's a, uh, we do a, we do a dead drop, you know, um, I'm just alerted when, when there's a chalk mark on the, uh, on the curb, you know, near my house, then I know to go to the drop zone and look for things. Um, we have, we have weirdly unaware that your moles exist unless someone else points them out to you. Are you now, are you not making a Minotaurian reference? Because I don't know if you're looking no. at the screen right now, but you know, Archie luxury is in the house. Well, welcome to the program. Welcome to the show, Archie luxury corporate. Um, and he says losers. Well, thank you for joining the loser channel. Archie, Wait, loser. Please like, and subscribe and tell your friends. <laughs> we appreciate that. Wait, was he actually on? Have a look. What do you mean is he actually on? You're talking about a tiny little fat man from Australia. Of course he's on. He has literally absolutely nothing else to do. Because he's, he's doing a live stream himself, I think, right now. Yes, but you know, as you know, yeah, Clyde, yeah. He, could, he could barely put any energy into that whatsoever. So it's probably easier for him to just go on his go on his pitiful little go, you know, let's just move along. I don't want to talk about him. Okay. Clyde well, should bounce off and start a rebel rebel stream. I am I am in support of that. I, I support anything Clyde wants to do. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. You're my man. Hisham, Habib, happy new year to you, Hisham and the family. Yep. Sounds good. All right, guys. Well, what I'm looking for here is um, I'm look I'm looking for uh, I'm looking for Rolex predictions. I do have a few more. Oil Money Watches says, will the Matt will the Milgauss GV references be retired or refreshed? What's Clyde, what's the GV? Help me out here. Uh the green. Green ver green version glass yeah. green I, I don't uh, know. glass verde mm. oh the glass verd verd it's not verde another, yeah in other words in other words the bl black dial and then the blue dial with the green crystal well there's been a little talk that the whole Milgauss line could be kaput and discontinued so that is or, one of those little rumors out there right now mm. or on the other hand mm -hmm. I can also see the Air King. The new uh, yes, that's you know what M Mackenzie is at a wedding right now, drinking copious amounts of Jack Daniels because there's open bar. Mm -hmm. But he texted me his predictions, so I'll I'll get to them and read them in a minute. And that's one of his. Now I foresee them possibly mm -hmm. going messing uh, updating date just references. Mm. You well, know. It, it that's like if they changed the date just reference and no one noticed, did it really even happen? <laughs> you know? Only if it happens in a fourth. It's so unpopular with you know typical collectors. I mean, there are oh, some yeah. guys. I mean, most of us have a date just in the collection, yeah. but there are very few people love them and get well, you know obsessive about them. Um, mm. it, it's like it's like the girlfriend that's really you know maybe just a little bit on the chubby side, or maybe she has. Maybe yes, she's got a couple of moles, and she she's <laughs> quite right. great. You, you, you look for it you're terrible, you Clyde. You're terrible. You, you got you look, you look forward to her when you go home, but you don't really take her out dancing. <laughs> That's what most people think about. But, you, just, you just sneak in. You sneak in the window. You you you, you open the shoe cabinet, and then you go home. <laughs> well, yeah, you have you, you meet her I, dinner. I you understand. Eat something else, and then yeah. All right, Clyde. How about a green dial explorer too? That would be cool. But okay, but let's go back to the date just. You know what was even more unpopular than the date just, I think? Mm, go ahead. What? The OPs. That's you know what? Honestly, they did something pretty amazing with the OP, which is to say they got me to notice them because that was a that was a watch that I mean, but basically the well, OP, they made them they made them very bright and tasteless. So and, and they made them <laughs> exactly. And they made them 41 millimeters. Like yeah. it, Honestly, they could have just renamed that whole line, you know, because it, it bears almost no resemblance to the prior version of them. 
So um, I, I do like what they did with them. And um, I, I also let's look at your James Cameron. Apparently, I don't qualify to get one though, Clyde. I want, I want to, I want to, I want a forty-one Let, millimeter turquoise, and I don't think I can get one. Let's look at your James Cameron though, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead. Let's look First, at it. Deep Sea. Yes. And keep in mind version one. Yeah. Well, who cares? Really? <laughs> well, two. the guys who have version two. Version two is so much better. The guys who have version two care. Yeah. Well, yes, you know, they care because it's like I don't have at least I don't have that crappy version one. Well, you know what? Exactly. <laughs> and then bracelet. Yeah. But um, I don't have any problem. I personally I think version one's more special. It will have been made less. And if they change it really quickly, then that's Rolex saying oops. And Rolex doesn't make many oopses, you know? So like the stamp that was printed upside with the airplane printed upside down. That's worth a whole lot of money. So in theory, the version one of the James Cameron should wind up potentially being more collectible. But but, but, but let's go back to it. Let's go back to even your yeah. much less desirable version one. Okay. <laughs> Before that, though, they they had what well, the black yeah. <laughs> which was even less yeah. desirable than your version one. I was listening. I, I was watching a video by, I don't remember who. It'll come to me in a minute. Who said that's like the, the, the least desirable. Yeah steel sports of of all rolexes and it's true that black TV, yeah it's like the least but they all they had to do is yeah. yeah and keep in mind rolex is very greedy and lazy mm. so it's just like okay, okay they're uh, how do we make people buy blue, we'll put blue we'll put blue on okay there done but you know the the it was a little more than just the blue in the sense that they they took on a like a they went way beyond with James Cameron. They went way beyond just corporate ambassador. What they did was they built a prototype that went down to the Mariana trench, you know, with him. Yeah. And also they named it for him and they have never named a version for anybody. So it's really a little bit more than we'll just slap a blue dial on there. In other words, right. there was like a whole corporate set of decisions and marketing that went, that rode along with that that suggests that maybe it was a little more than a committee of guys getting together at lunch one day and going, mon dieu, what have we done? We'll throw a blue dial, see if we sell a few more. <laughs> well, and someone else has brought something else saying, Rolex might discontinue, discontinue the Wimpleton dial on the date just 41. We have been hearing rumors to that effect. Okay. Right. What if that's part of a wider thing? What there if it's a disinformation do... campaign? No. Mm. What if it's something where yeah. they're going to reach? They're going to change all the dials. All the dials on what? The entire line? On the, yeah, on the date just. I mean, what are they going to take? They've had champagne dials for forty years. How could I, I refer well, you back to the open? To the open. Okay, right. They're going to go Stella across the whole date just. Well, let's just say if they were to do something radical and creative with the date just. That would really be shocking, <laughs> you yeah. know. Honestly, it yeah. would be it would be bold. It would be shocking, and potentially as, it might make me as want one. Shocking as the op as the ops were. Mm, mm, well, no, I okay. I'll argue against that one. Here, here would be my point. If I had to take the uh, the opposition on that one, what I would say is the op was sort of an unloved, dusty part of the line, whereas the date just is really the centerpiece of the non sports line. It's like. Mm. The, the 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 date just probably represents something like 55 percent of all what rolex watches sold right whereas ops were probably like three percent so I, I, right now probably at, at rolex ad's instead of everyone asking for a sub or a gmt or a daytona if they're really new yeah. they're probably asking for ops i agree with that you know the ops are uh trading at what roughly double retail yep. which is like you know nuts it's nuts. The 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 OP is fifty nine hundred. Let's call it six. By the time you get out of there, it's probably like sixty four hundred dollars. You know, with tax, and they're oh. going for like you know, ten, eleven, twelve. You know, in the yeah. aftermarket, which is, you know, a little bit nutty. But um, I don't foresee that happening with the date just. But with Rolex, you never fully you never fully know. Do you? It's a conservative line, the date just line. It's pretty conservative. If they were to do something to jazz it up. I'd probably like it better. You know, I would. I think my yeah. my, my whole objection to this. That's why they would do it, yeah. because we would want it more. That, that's kind of how it works. Mm. Well, we'll see. I guess we'll find out. <laughs> you know, like, let's not argue. Let's wait and see. I do not expect to be, I expect not to be able to buy any new Explorer 2 from the ADs. Well, yeah. 
everything is hard to get. Anything in steel right now is yep. just halfway impossible. Look, there are a couple of things that you can get with probably, even if you don't have a buying history and with a couple of months worth of, a um, couple of months worth of wait list. I think that includes the deep sea in black that we were just talking about, Clyde. I think that um, you probably can get yourself one of those. And also you probably could get, um, mm. Mm. you could probably get a, um, Explore. a, a 43 millimeter sea dweller. I was going to say. Yeah. That, okay. I would agree wholeheartedly with that. And actually I think the Explorer might be a little harder to get. Here's the order. Okay. Deep sea sea dweller in black the Sea Dweller 43, and then the Explorer, yeah. the Explorer 2. So, okay. And someone, okay, and what is it? Um, mm. Rolex GM, I mean, GMT Coke. GMT Master Coke. No. Oh, 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 oh. We got to talk about GMTs. Go ahead, though. All right, go ahead. Let's well, go. well, somebody emailed me today. Right, let me let me give credit where credit is due. Um, I mean, this has come up in the comments. I'm probably in the comments here already too. But let me have, just have a quick look. Um, David Drayson, he uh, he emailed me today. By the way, my email is Mark M A R C Mark Goldberg eight at gmail.com. So go ahead and email your comments, questions, and stuff like that. And then we'll talk about you on the air also. Um, hey, Mark, have a happy new year. I have a question. I haven't heard anybody talk about this. Will Rolex now have to make the GMT bigger to match the sub? I would imagine so. Thank you, David. And when I read that, I was like, nah, what, why would they do that? Oh my God, he might quite possibly be exactly right. Think about it for a second. They took the super case, they changed it around. They actually changed uh -huh. the lugs a little bit on the bat girl. Uh -huh. So what about bumping it up to 41 millimeters, Clyde? What do you think? Because the lugs are already slimmed down a little bit. What do you think? I say not uh, this year. In other words, the GMT would get the sub treatment. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yes. Where where because like right now the GMT measures out at what 40, right? And yeah. um, so did the sub last year. And then they came out with the new version of the sub and they call it a 41, even though it seems like know, all the guys time Rolex was pitting because, okay, every year Rolex comes up with a marquee update hmm. and then, then just a bunch of, by the ways, like for yeah. instance, like this, this, you know, 2019 or 2020 got this yeah. suck ass year. Basically the marquee yeah. was the Submariner. And the, by the way, was the OPs. Mm -hmm. but I Although think I think that, wow, but but I think, I don't know. You think they're surprised by the reaction of the OP? Because it got more than a by the, yeah. got yeah, way I mean, more than a by the way reaction, didn't it? Yeah, and it got, yeah, it was like Steve I want, I want, Yeah, exactly, exactly. You know what? I want an OP Clyde, and I never in my life ever even looked at the OP line. That was like, phew, the case is full of them back huh. in the day. I never, I never looked. You better be careful oh. if you start fighting, because, you know. <laughs> you know. Okay, so um, anyway, what do we think about the GMT getting the Rolex treatment and just bumping that buzz that bezel up by like three tenths of a millimeter and calling it a forty-one? You and know? then will they up do the same thing with the Batgirl or the Batman? Mm. Look what we got it. here. <laughs> I'm choked up. Clyde, introduce Blue Shirt. <laughs> hey, Blue Shirt, how you doing, man? Good, good. Happy New Year. Mark Goldberg! Choke, choke, choke. No. Blue Shirt Buddha! <laughs> Ugh, sorry, I don't know what I... I swallowed funny there, guys. Uh, what did you swallow? <laughs> My pride, Clyde. That's that's why I got you on, <laughs> to help me out of here. Blue Shirt, tell us, what do you think? Is is Rolex going to bump up the GMT to a 41 the way they did to the way... Are they going to give it the Submariner treatment this year? Nope. What makes you say no? GMT is staying the way it is because it's that and the Yacht Master and the and Gauss and um. Okay. It, it's the, 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 the they've got oh, the whole range covered. They got forty four covered, forty three, forty two, forty one, forty thirty nine. Okay. Now, okay. now here's the here's another possibility. Mm -hmm. I could see them. Just ignoring the Explorer 2, even though it is an anniversary, because guess what? There will be other anniversaries. Mm -hmm. 
and up and instead updating the Explorer one, making it forty two or something like that. No, the Explorer is going to stay at thirty nine. It's the only thirty nine uh-huh. mil watch. And- Let's duke it out, guys. Okay, so um, um, I, here's a story time, guys. Once Before the <laughs> right, once upon a time. A, uh, a popular YouTuber who will remain nameless to protect him and his sources called me and said, holy cow, you're never going to believe it. But he told me, I have on very good authority, very good authority, that Rolex Submariner line will be going to 41 millimeters. And I completely poo-pooed him. Mm. <laughs> I mean, I, I said, absolutely not. My sources have not reported this. This is What's poppy up. Was he German? No, we're we're gonna. Was we're not, this we're, money penny? We're not. We're not gonna. We're not gonna. I said it was a, a YouTuber, but we're oh, not gonna. YouTuber. Okay, yeah. Yeah, right. but we're gonna take no steps to identify this person because we. We have we, German YouTubers. We, we, must, we must protect sources. But I get. My, here's my point. My point was that even the sources seemed impeccable, and so what I really thought we had was a was a disinformation campaign. Mm. <laughs> I was convinced that Rolex was like leaking stuff in order to. Um, you know, anyway, so he called it at 41 millimeters. He called it. Um, and th- the most frustrating thing of all, I-, I think, for for this person is that in order to protect his sources, he did not make a video. Yeah. You know, gotcha. until after it was announced, which I thought, like, you know, what a what a what a what a righteous person, you know, I would have had that moment where I'd have been like, do it, don't do it, do it. Don't, you know, I would have been like the devil either way, you know, burn your source, protect your source. But um so I guess the reason I'm mentioning this is uh, because Blue Shirt, you seem absolutely, utterly convinced. Why would, how could they, why would they, what they won't change the GMT to 41. And, and yeah, and I want to believe you, right? Because status quo is much easier to absorb than like radical changes, like a half a millimeter in a Rolex, you know, that's like, you know, right. revolutionary, but they just did it in the Submariner. And I completely had your exact reaction one year ago saying, oh, hell no, that's ridiculous. Right. But I mean, they yeah. just put the new movement in the in the GMT and mm-hmm. and then gave it a new shiny new jingle, a non jingly jangly jubilee. So uh, I think they're going to and, and it's you can't buy them. So why? 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 Fuck well, that's with a, that, you know what? That's a fair point. But they could always throw a plastic spacer in there <laughs> you know, and increase the size of it just a little bit. OK, well, we have a question here. Um, Kepler bought a one four oh six oh for eight thousand euro. Is that a good purchase? Mm. Um, so that's look, like close uh, to ten grand U.S. No. American dollars. How much is eight thousand euro? That would be $9,000. Oh, no, you were right. I, I thought that sounded high, but it's uh, the exchange rate must suck for us right now. It's it 97. It's like 97.84. So, look, here's the thing. We don't know exactly where you are. You could probably get one of those for eight, for like about $1,500 cheaper here, right? Don't you think? I, I think I feel, so. Yeah. So, but America gets good prices and Europe gets like screwed, especially the UK. So, we, we don't know where. Tell us where you are, Kepler, but um, you, you would you would have done better in the United States. Uh, if Mark is 12 years older than Clyde, that would make Clyde 107, and that is correct. <laughs> that, is, that, is, uh, that is absolutely correct. Uh, the, the three old men here. Oh, wow. Well, and uh, one of us, the $6 million man, um, here we are. Happy New Year, pal. Exactly. Okay. So, oh my God, I remember Ilya Koryakin, the man from Uncle. That's I remember right. All this crazy stuff. Um, okay. So, um, oh wow. Well, young XLNC, extra large North Carolina. I think. Do you think they'll do a green ceramic bezel for the 50th anniversary? This would be. Um, I'm sure he's talking about the Explorer, Explorer two. two. I would think that they would might do a green GMT hand. Yeah, not a green boy. bezel. If they did a green GMT hand, I would be less than impressed because I love the pop of the orange. Mm-hmm. Um, but just to entertain the possibility for a minute. If they did a green ceramic bezel, that would put it right up into Sermit, you know. Correct. I think yeah. that would that would that would be super popular. Like that would you'd never get one. Like if they did that, everybody would want one. 
Wow. And in but fact, would it be after, a fixed bezel or a, or a rotatable yeah. bezel? No, 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 I'm sure it'd have to be fixed, right? Just like the, the Daytona. Mm. You know, mm. if, I don't think they would make it rotatable because it's never been, it's always been uh, in the category of, um, you know, in the, in the category of a, uh, of a, of a caving watch, right? It's not, it's not like a pilot or a travel watch, you know, technically. Mm -hmm. So, Okay. Interesting. Well, young XLNC, that's an interesting prediction. Um, I, I don't know. None of us know. Um, no. The panel, the panel seems to disagree with it. But I will tell you, I think that would be insanely popular if they did it. We would all, mm -hmm. we would all want one. We mm -hmm. would all want one. Well, blue shirt. What do you got to throw into the conversation? Any random Rolex predictions? Um. <sighs> I think maybe you might see maybe you might see a polar dial explorer two one four two seven zero. Um, yeah, and uh, the def I I, I don't want to say I put money on it, but I'm pretty sure they're going to do something to the explorer too. I, I don't think they're just going to let the fiftieth anniversary sail on by. And your but your prediction is the. Is the is the is green? Your, if they're, they're gonna right, if they're yeah. gonna put in green as an anniversary color, it would be the GMT hand is green. Mm. I gotcha. Mm. And mm. I think they keep the steel bezel. Mm. Okay, interesting. Mm. Well, you know, Mackenzie has one of Mackenzie's predictions is that the steel bezel, well, the gold bezel, mm -hmm. will come off of the two tone Daytona and be replaced by ceramic. Ooh. So that the entire, you know, because the interesting, the, yeah. Tell me on the gold. Remind me on the 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 gold. Does the gold have a gold? You know, the solid gold Daytona. Mm -hmm. What's what's that got for a bezel? Because the platinum has the ceramic, but what about the what about the gold? Hmm. I I'm not positive, but I'm pretty sure that it's that it's it's all gold. Hmm. Huh. Then, um, so he's saying, at least on the two-tone, they're going to go ceramic. Has anybody sent a vintage or neo-vintage to the Rolex Service Center for an insurance appraisal? Clyde, you're, you're the insurance appraisal guy, but I think they just do service. They don't do appraisals at the RSC, right? It's jewelers do appraisals. Right. I, I send it to a need. Mm. So I think, in theory, what mm -hmm. you would do what you would do EPC acquisitions. I think in theory, what you do is you'd go to a, a Rolex authorized dealer. That's not a boutique, but a jeweler. And all, almost all of those do appraisals for 75 to $125, something like that. Just leave your watch and, and ask for a written appraisal for insurance purposes. And they will do it. Almost all of them do that. Mm -hmm. And uh, as Clyde pointed out a long time ago, and, uh, and I jumped on that bandwagon also, th that's a good way to get, um, authentication also, right? Yes, right, definitely. Except you can't say authentication because I'll throw you out of the store. Well, that's a good point, but you can get an insurance appraisal, and if it's good enough for an insurance company, and then you know, the, even the appraisers are actually licensed to do those appraisals, right? So yeah. that's that's how I think you should do it. You should yes. you should imagine that you should plan on spending around a hundred bucks for that, or at least in the U.S. Yep. Well, it, how much? The the last price increase was. Um, was funky because what they did was they raised certain models up by three or four percent and then other models by like 12 you know so mm. they there it was not an across the board the the so, rumor that i heard was that the, there's going to be one price increase in january and then another price increase later on in the year at a point to be determined holy cow mm. why 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 two I don't they're remember. The, because, because they're rolex and they can yes, they can I know, guys. I know, but think about it. Do you remember a year when they did it twice? I I, I don't really remember them doing it twice. Oh, Look at even well, Omega's, yeah, Omega's, no, Omega's no, raised no, the no, price no. of the three twenty one twice before it's even come out. Yeah, mm. and a dollar ninety nine used to buy you a grand slab at Denny's. What's your point? <laughs> you know what, honest guys. The one of the one of the things. I mean, there's a lot to miss about COVID. I haven't seen my my parents are elderly, you know, and I and I haven't seen them since all of this started. So there's, believe me, there's a lot to complain about with COVID, but you mean parents of the elderly are also elderly. But I, <laughs> you gotta hate you so much. 
<laughs> you know, the, but but I miss my Denny's. There's literally one down the street. They built it just like a couple years ago. I was so happy when they put a Denny's in my backyard, and now I feel like I can't go. Nope. Uh, Forbin, is it sacrilege to change a Rolex bracelet to something like a strap coat or a rubber bee if the PCLs bother you that much? No. Oh, so. Yes. No. <laughs> Well, okay. There's no so gonna, reason to ever change out of a Rolex bracelet ever. I'm going to be the tie. I'm going to be. I'm going to be the tiebreaker here. Now, <laughs> now, blue shirt. You change your back. What's the big deal? Do you ever change your socks for Christ's sake? <laughs> the Rolex bracelet is the most perfect thing ever created. Clyde, your response. You can easily go back to it. Jane, you ignorant slut. Push it up a little bit. Rubber is lighter. And uh, and also, if you've got something with polished center links, you would, you'd be protecting those shiny, shiny, delicate. You know, delicate polished center links. You know, Blue Show, you're arguing with a man who who bought a, a Parmigiani Fleurier, so I don't know that you know that logic is going to apply. Oh, Clyde, speaking of Parmigiani Fleurier, I saw that uh, Federico over at Delray Watches, Delray Watches, Delray Watches has a Parmigiani Fleurier gold f- tourbillon, which its original sales price was two hundred and fifty thousand, and they have it for fifty thousand dollars. Like amazing. Nice. Yeah, but so no, not not your thing. Okay, so look, oh. I'm gonna break. I'm gonna hold on. I'm gonna break the tie here because we got one one. You know, Clyde in favor of replacing with a rubber B and so forth, and uh, Blue Shirt saying that is sacrilege. And I'm going with Blue Shirt on this one, and I'll tell you why. Because I did it. Okay, I spent the ridiculous sum of um, of, of three hundred dollars for a really nice rubber rubber for my James Cameron. And uh, it, I, it reduced the weight of the James Cameron. It balanced the watch better, and it just annoyed me to no end that it wasn't factory original. You know, it's mm-hmm. um, it just wasn't factory original. There was just, just something about it that is like um, showering with a raincoat on. It's like going into the pool with your T-shirt on. It just doesn't feel quite right. Mm. So nice. I'm saying no. Aren't Rolex Sports Models the one with the flip lock class versus just a single fold over? Um, well, um, yeah, most of them have the easy link system except for the divers, which have the glide lock in one fashion or another. Yeah, that's the other thing that Rolex could do. They could put the glide lock on on every oyster. Ooh, speaking of oyster, um, mm. said uh, Carlos says about the oyster flex. Um, okay, so. Um, let me let me real quick look up Mackenzie's predictions because 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 I think some of them are dead bag. Now his first prediction, this is gonna be interesting, guys, is uh he predicts a Yachtmaster Oyster Flex 42 millimeter in steel. Hmm. And I'm gonna tell you why I believe that one. Because I I have a because Honestly, I'd have to look back and see which of my moles predicted it. But last summer, one of my moles predicted it and didn't know when it would be coming, whether it was for this year or the following year. So, And that is because <clears throat> um, they made a case for it. They made a, um, a, specific, uh, they made a, a specific coffin for it. So um, that's why he predicted it. Um, and and uh, so, yeah, apparently. Now, that's probably going to really tick off all those people who bought it in gold mm. Mm. isn't it and it's white gold isn't it mm-hmm. Mm. so they're going to throw it out there in steel um which is there's precedent because they did that f- to the um to the sky dweller right they had mm. the white gold one for 50 grand and then they put out the steel version for 14 not that you can get it but what a huge difference in price thirty six thousand dollar discount for buying that mm. okay um, he says, Mackenzie says the Explorer 2, the 42 millimeter, he says, going to get a ceramic bezel. And he's also the one who said that the two tone Daytona will get a ceramic bezel. Mm-hmm. And he believes that one, now this is radical. I don't know about this one. He says that they're going to discontinue a three hander, either the Explorer 1, um, or they're going to put that in a new OP41 case. 
So they just upsize it. And so that'd be, you know, like a change in size. Or they might discontinue the Air King, which I've heard repeatedly, yep. um, or the Millie, um, which Clyde suggests that uh, they're not going to discontinue. Clyde, the you poor disagree Millie. with us. It's a little unloved, but. Uh, so, but is the Air King. Hmm? so is the Air King. True. And the Air King costs less money. You know, right. I kind of. I, I, I'm on the fence on the Air King because I kind of like it, but I'm put off by the numerals. I'm always afraid I'm going to think it's 50 o'clock. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> like I just don't know how I'm going to feel. I feel like if I could wear it for a couple of days, you mm -hmm. know, then I, I mean, I'm sure you get used to it and, and probably, of course. you know, it's like, you know, there's like no second thought to it, but for whatever reason, I do worry a little bit about, you know, feeling like I'm looking at a, uh, feeling like I'm looking at a, a, at a speedometer, you know? So now speaking of speedometers, let, let me tell you a quick tale of woe regarding the Ford Exploder. Uh -oh. um, kind of a funny story. So um, let's see. <clears throat> As you know, I took a lot of pipe. I got dragged. I got, you know, for uh, trading in a Porsche Macan on the Ford Exploder, Explorer. But um, I really actually have a by nobody important. Um, but I have really missed it. Um, I, I mean, I really like it because it's big. I have the Platinum Edition, so it's all leather. It's got 365 horsepower turbo. It's it's really beautiful. It has like every kind of tech in it that you could humanly think of. But um, I took it to get the oil changed, not to a dealer. And um, the, the guy at like the Jiffy Loop kind of place, he said to me, hey, I think you're leaking oil out of your turbo. He goes, so you might get that looked at. I was like, oh, because I have 56,000 miles and the powertrain warranty ends at 60. <laughs> so it's right. I think Ford goofed this one up. I think their planned obsolescence is for like 10 seconds after your, you know, after your, uh, after your powertrain warranty is up. And this, you know, this looks like it may have been caught like a moment before. So I took it into the dealer. And um, and there's a there's a moral to this story, guys. There's a lesson in here for all of you who have vehicles um, that might need you know that might need work and warranty work and that kind of thing. Anyway, so um, they put oil or they put dye in the oil, and I'm going to drive it for another couple hundred miles, and then they want me to bring it back, and this way they'll be able to see where the oil is leaking from, and then they'll know where they you know what they have to do to fix it. So in the meantime, you know, like my bumper to bumper warranty, which was three years, 36,000 miles, that's long gone. So I asked the, uh, I asked the dealership, can I throw an extended warranty on top of this thing? Cause I've been thinking about trading out of it, but the problem is Ford's just take this giant nosedive for depreciation. So you just can't get out of them unless you just, you know, unless you're prepared to take a fisting and I like the car. So I didn't really want to take the fisting on the depreciation given that I really like it. So he quoted me $4,200 for three additional years, bumper to bumper, 75,000 miles with a hundred dollar deductible. And I was thinking, sounds a little pricey, but you know, if this engine is going and had it gone on me, you know, that's a four or $5,000 job right there. So let me, let me, let me go think about this. So I call a buddy who knows a lot about this kind of stuff. And he said, negotiate. So I went online and long story short, here's the drop dead end of the story. I found four dealers discounting the exact same product that these guys wanted to sell me for $4,200 at my dealer. I bought the identical plan for $2,490, <laughs> like almost half off. I mean, like what a nice. So if you want to buy an extended warranty for a Ford then go to like, go to just look around for dealers that sell it with an online process. They'll send somebody to inspect your car and they'll sell you the thing. They'll make like 300, they'll mark it up $300. My dealer's marking this thing up 1500 bucks, mm. you know, and I, is, and he, I call Swiss? is, is he Swiss? Yeah. <laughs> He's going to have two price increases this year. And actually the, the, that product that I bought, that warranty is going up on January 6th. So I just beat a price increase too. Very but I, nice. I called them up and I go, dude, like, I don't mind you making a couple bucks on it, but this is nuts. How about like, you know, come down, you know, come down, me, come close to that price. And he's like, oh, if you got that price, you just buy it, which told me that he knew exactly, you know, what I was buying. And, you know, he was mad, but he'll I, get over it, you know, well, I should hope so. Well, and so, the, uh, part, you know, the <laughs> people that sell you the warranty cheap, 
doesn't matter. You'll take it to the guy that tried to screw you over and make him work on it. Well, you know, the dealer, you know, they don't make, uh, they don't, you know, the dealer just bills Ford for it. So like, they're happy to do the work they, you know, they don't mind. Um, turbos are known to go out at $60,000. So uh, shot in the dark. Well, then this is perfect timing. Maybe that's why they only warranty them up to 60,000. Cause they know all the real problems are going to come, you know, like immediately after that, we have a stupid chat from chat. From Cream Disco, $4.99. What do you think about the new Root Beer GMT 18 karat stainless steel? I'm going to let the other boys tackle that before I kick in my answer. What do you think, guys? I like it. I love it. Love it. Mm -hmm. Should I break the tie here? Sure. Okay. I love it, too. (laughs) (laughs) You got three out of three. And um, there's not a ton of two-tone that I love. Um I, I, I didn't really used to like the two-tone um, until that one that you have, Blue Shirt, be- when they went ceramic with it. And then, you know, then I, I really – I've got the gold one, and we have the same dial. And it's really mm-hmm. mostly about the dial. Correct. Um, you know, that, that watch, it's mostly about that sunburst blue dial mm-hmm. with the gold paint in the mix. Um, yep. you know, and the And the brilliance of the blue ceramic bezel. So, honestly, um, I love that 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 two-tone watch and the the root beer gmt is just beautiful um somehow how the, the way they did the coloration of the bezel yeah. um and the way that blends with the warmth of the gold is just um it. it's just outrageous so clyde don't don't play any soundboard stuff or you know don't do that okay well guys i don't know it seems like it seems like we're slowing down might be a decent time to wrap it up um, let's see if we have any parting words of wisdom from either the Wrangler or the blue shirt guys. What do you, you know, any, any, any final calls on 2021 and Rolex get it now, if you can get it because the prices are going up twice. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. That's to a really a mil- good point. Clyde to use the military acronym Bohica. We're all gonna have to go. We're all gonna have to look that up <laughs> later. I have a feeling we shouldn't talk about it now. <laughs> Undoubtedly, it's way too naughty. It's like it's gonna be like Fubar, you know, or something like that. Bohica. So look it up, guys. It's far worse. Um, yeah. Okay. Cool. Well, then I'll have to look it up. So um, look, guys. Thank you so much for joining me, the Rancher Blue Shirt Buddha, 2021. We certainly hope that you have a happy New Year, and we definitely hope that it is a better world for us on the other side of this. I think we got another six months of this nonsense, but let's let's hope things ease up after that. There are a lot of dead people. There are a lot of people hurting. And worst of all, at least in the United States, we've been in each other's throats, you know? And that really has to end. At the end of the day, I don't care who's the president. All I really care about is that my neighbor makes a living, that my that my neighbor is healthy and that, you know, that they're wishing the same thing for me. So I want to tell you something, guys, whether we differ on watches, whether we differ on politics, doesn't really matter. I just want to thank you for being with us at this time. We are Horological Brothers, and let's do this again soon.